I went into the tack shop the other day to pick up my boots, which had been repaired. I came out with my boots, fly spray, neat's foot and hoof oil and treats. <laughs> I spent like 50 pounds. I went in for boots, my own boots that I own. Tack shop detours, budget for it. Hello, this is Riding With Re. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today we are talking about how much it costs to own a horse. How much it costs to own a horse in the UK. I'm gonna be giving you a personalized breakdown of every single cost associated with owning horses. Let's get straight into it. So if you followed me for a little while now, you might remember that way back last year, I did a how much horses cost video and I was looking into how much it would cost to own my own horse. And I tried to basically get all of the numbers because I didn't think that they really existed on the internet anywhere. Fast forward a year, I am obviously a horse owner now, which still feels kind of weird to say. And I've also set up Equestrian Money Diaries where hundreds of people from around the world have submitted all of their monthly costs for their horses anonymously. Today, I'm gonna be taking you through all of the costs that you will pay for your horse monthly and then beyond monthly and as we go along I'm going to be giving you options for different variables such as different bedding, different livery types, different farrier costs because if you have a horse you will already know there are so many variables to how much it will cost you to own a horse but my hope is that by the end of this video you will have a solid understanding of the different variables and how much it might cost you to have a horse one day. So what I'm going to recommend that you do is grab yourself a pen and paper so that you can do the calculation calculations along with me. I do have a budget spreadsheet on my Etsy shop if you want to do this step by step with me. It's in the link below. And if you want to explore any more equestrian money diaries from real people around the world, you can do that on my website ridingwithre.com. Okay, grab your pen and paper, pause this video, come back and then let's jump into it together. I've got my laptop and I've put my hair up because we're not here to play today, we're here to work. So if you have the Excel spreadsheet in front of you or you have a notepad, let's kick things off. We're gonna start with livery. Livery is gonna be one of the biggest monthly expense that you spend on your horse. And it's essentially another word for rent. It's the rent that you pay on the space where your horse lives. Now, there are three types of livery that I'm gonna focus on today, but I'm also gonna give you a few definitions for other livery types that are available. And I would encourage you, if you are looking for a horse or you already have one, to look in your local area and see what type of liveries are available and what the costs are. Because livery costs can really really vary depending on where you are in the country, how close you are to competition venues, to good hacking, what services are available on the yard, who the yard owner is, if you've got this amazing coach who's well known or a rider. These things can all change the cost, but I'm gonna use costs that people have sent in from Equestrian Money Diaries anonymously to give you some average costs for these types of services. Today, we're gonna to focus on DIY livery, part livery, and full livery. Let me explain what those mean. DIY livery, do-it-yourself livery, is the most common choice for livery in the UK, and it's also one of the cheapest. On DIY livery, you typically have access to turnout and the stable and somewhere to store your things, such as a tack room or storage room, but you're expected to be there every single day and look after your horse 365 days a year. This is generally the choice for most people because it's cheaper, it's also more flexible around different hours of work, and it means you have full control over your horse's care. Care. but it does mean a huge time commitment and making sure that you can be there every single day to look after them. Part livery is kind of a halfway between DIY and full livery and typically in the UK it shows up in something called 5-2 livery. 5-2 livery, like the 5-2 diet, is typically where you have a horse on full livery five days a week and then DIY livery on the weekends. Part livery exists in a lot of different ways on different yards so I would encourage you to have a look at that but that's one of the, the kind of the most common definitions of DIY, of, of part livery in the UK. We then have full livery. Full livery typically means that your horse is looked after 24 hours a day, all of the care is looked after by a yard team, and in some instances, it also means that riding is included in livery. One thing I forgot to mention here about full livery is that typically your costs also include your bedding, hard feed, and your forage. So if you choose full livery in the spreadsheet, you can now move on to horse and rider health costs. This also sometimes happens in part livery, but it's worth checking with the individual yard. Now I said that beyond these three liveries, there were other types of livery. So let me list those out for you now. 
Grass livery is when you just have turnout, no stable, and it's typically on a DIY basis or for youngsters or retired horses. Retirement livery on its own is a whole different thing. And it's typically when a horse is retired, they go and live in a herd and they are looked after by someone 24 hours a day again, but the owner doesn't tend to go down there, take them out of the field. You don't tend to have much involvement with retirement livery. And if you're interested in learning more about why that is, I've linked out an article because I recently learned about it myself and it's quite interesting. You then have working livery. Working livery is typically seen on riding schools or riding college yards. And what it means is that the horse has a reduced livery and potentially some care taken by the yard team in exchange for using that horse during lessons. This can be a really great solution for somebody who needs their horse ridden a few times a week and can't get down there or is looking for a reduced cost and some help. But people must make sure with working livery that it suits the horse and that they're comfortable with how much the horse is being ridden outside of their own riding and who is riding the horse because at riding schools of course we have novices and different types of riders so it's an important thing to talk about with the yard manager. So those are the main areas of livery and as I said livery can vary around the country so let's dive into an average cost for DIY livery. Now I had a look at over 300 responses from people around the UK and the average cost for DIY livery was £147. The average cost for part livery was £375 and the the average cost for full livery was 740. Now full livery is slightly more of a big breadth of changes of cost because at the bottom of full livery you have basic full livery where the horse's care is taken care of by a yard team but you do the riding and at the other end of the full livery spectrum you have full-blown competition yards where the horse is on a training program, the rider has coaching and there's all sorts of other things and those can run into the thousands of pounds. So full livery is a little bit more of a, a broader spectrum and I would encourage you to look at the full livery yards around you if you think that that is something you will want to take. So what I want you to do is take these numbers and decide which type of livery you would be most likely to take. One thing I should mention which I forgot is that with DIY livery on some DIY yards you have what's called assisted DIY livery and what that means is that services can be provided to owners on an ad hoc basis. So for example if next week you're working and you know that you can't get your horse in on Tuesday and Friday you text the yard manager and they will bring them in for you and add that to your livery bill at the end of the month. Typically speaking, I worked on an assisted DIY yard and the costs when I was at uni were a turnout and bring in is £2.50, um, and a muck out is five pounds. And those are kind of the going rates for someone who's already on the yard. And it can be a really helpful way to do DIY, but just know that you've got that cover if you need it, if you're away, on holiday, whatever. So let's move on to bedding. Again, there are so many variables and choices when it comes to bedding. So I'm gonna focus on two of the most popular, straw and shavings. Typically with straw and shavings, I'm gonna be talking about the smaller bales. So with straw, this would be the ones that you would see people sitting on in a barn dance if that existed or on a movie. You know the ones I mean, they're small. And with shavings, again, they're about the same size and shavings are variable in cost, but I'm gonna give you a sense. So straw generally comes in at between two and four pounds per bale. And riders and owners usually put in one to two bales a week, depending on the season and a number of other variables. So let's call it three. Now this is where my monthly budget spreadsheet really comes in handy because you'll notice at the bottom, there's a tab called hay, feed and bedding calculator. In this calculator, you're gonna be able to put in the cost of a bale and how many bales a week you use it and it's gonna automatically calculate the monthly cost for you. Let me show you an example cost and if you're using pen and paper, you can just do this maths manually. So if we're saying that a bale of straw costs three pounds and we're putting two bales of straw in a week, which is eight bales a month, we are saying that that straw is gonna cost around 24 pounds a month. Let's go through that once more together. If you're in the document, put in your cost per bale, so three pounds as an example here, put in the number of bales you think you'll use per week and the rest is gonna fill out automatically for you. If you're using pen on paper or a traditional calculator, get your cost per bale, your number of bales per week, times that number of bales per week times four, to get your number of bales per month and then times that final number by the cost of one bale to get your total cost of bales per month. And we're applying that same logic to shavings, okay? So shavings come in a little bit higher. They're usually between six and eight pounds a bale. And people again put in one to two bales of shavings a week. If we're saying that a bale of shavings is seven pounds and we're putting two bales of shavings in a week, 
that is eight bales of shavings a month, which is 56 pounds. Again, if you're using the spreadsheet, you're just gonna get that cost per bale, the number of bales you plan to put in per week, and the rest will fill out automatically. Again, if you're using pen and paper, it's the exact same sum as before. So have your cost per bale ready, figure out how many bales you'll need a week, times that weekly number by four to get your monthly number, and times that monthly number by your original cost per bale to get your number of bales per month. Now, of course, you might choose that you need more bales, less bales, and there's also the consideration that some horses have 24 seven turnout in the summer, meaning that you don't have to spend that money on bedding in the summer. Usually these things kind of even themselves out over the year. The other consideration is if you have rubber matting, which is a high upfront cost of maybe between 100 and 200 pounds, depending on how big your stable is and what kind of matting you get, it's a higher upfront cost, but actually in the long run, it's gonna cost you less in bedding because you already have that cushiony layer for the horse to lie on which means you don't need quite as much bedding on the stable floor to make them comfortable so again there are lots of choices when it comes to bedding that can make your horse more comfortable there's also things like wood chip shavings there's special types of shavings that have you know dust extracted things and come in more expensive so it's really up to you what you choose but these are two of the most popular okay moving on to forage now forage is typically hay or haylage i don't have costs for haylage for you here but i can tell you that it's usually a little bit more expensive than hay hay bales are typically bought by the hay bale so big hay bale comes in at around 45 to 50 pounds and most people say that they spend about that on their horse per, per month again this really depends how big your horse is how much they eat and how much turnout they get so if they're turned out 24 7 in the summer they may not need hay when they're in of course but if they're turned out in the winter and you don't have much grass on the ground you may need to supplement the grass with hay so again it usually balances itself out similar principle as with bedding if you're in the excel spreadsheet your hay bale might cost you 50 pounds but you might only use a quarter of a bale a week so that's 0.25 you might use half a bale a week 0.5 you might use three quarters of a bale a week put those numbers in and the rest is going to fill it out automatically if you're using pen and paper and a traditional calculator same thing applies you're going to get your cost per bale figure out how many bales you use a week so use your decimal numbers for this so a quarter is 0.25 half is 0.5 three quarters is 0.75 and one is obviously just one and then it goes up if it was one and a quarter it's 1.25 and so on use that to then times by four to get your monthly number once you have that monthly number times that by the cost of one hay bale to get your monthly cost for all hay moving on to hard feed again a huge variable depending on who your horse is what they need what you're doing the amount of work the size all these things matter. But I'm gonna give you two kind of basic ingredients which most people use a variation of just to give you a sense for the sake of this exercise of how much it might cost. Once you know what your horse will be eating, you can recalculate this and figure out how much it's gonna cost you. So I've got some lovely Denji Alpha A here and here are the things that you need to find in order to calculate your cost per month when it comes to horse feed. You need to know the cost per bag, you need to know the weight per bag and you need to know the serving size for your relevant horse. So again, if you're in the magic spreadsheet and you have these three numbers, the number of bags you need per month and the cost per bags per month is gonna be calculated for you. So we're gonna put in the 1660 cost per bag, 20 grams the weight per bag, the recommended weight, which was 0.5, and voila, we have our servings per bag, therefore our bags per month and our total cost as a result. If you're using a pen and paper and a traditional calculator, here is the sum you need. You're gonna take the weight per bag and divide it by the recommended daily weight for your horse. That number that you have in front of you now is the number of servings per bag. You're now gonna do 30 divided by that number of servings number. This is gonna give you how many servings are gonna last you 30 days or a month, thereabouts. The number you have in front of you now should be something like 0 point something, 1 point something, 2 point something, perhaps even 3 point something. This is the number of bags you need per month. You're gonna take this number and times it by your cost per bag. And that's gonna give you the exact the monthly cost for the number of bags you need for that hard feed. And then you have supplements. Again, I'm not gonna really give you a number here. I'm gonna put 10 pounds, 
But the thing is, some horses don't need supplements at all. Woody isn't on a supplement at the moment, but as, as horses get older, they tend to need more supplements, or if they have a particular condition or they might need a karma, it's something that you're gonna have to bear in mind because you might need it at some point. So if you do need to calculate for supplements, if you're in the Excel spreadsheet, use the same formula you would for the hard feed. If you're doing this manually, use the exact same sum I just gave you. Here's an example with Moody Mare. All you need is that weight per bag or box or whatever the tub is. You need that cost per bag, box, whatever, and you need the daily dose, and that's all you need to get calculating. Okay, let's move on to our second section, horse and rider health. Now I'm starting out with the farrier here, and as with livery, farrier costs really vary, but there are four main types, oh sorry, yeah, four main types, three main types of shoeing with one variation. So let me walk you through these. We have a barefoot, front shoes, a full set, and a full set with studs. Let me walk you through what that means. If your horse is barefoot, it means that they don't wear shoes. Don't mistake that for meaning that they don't need the farrier. They still need the farrier to come and trim their shoes and make sure that everything is golden. And that usually comes in at about £25 every eight weeks. So it's about £12.50 a month. If you are in the spreadsheet, all you need to do is put in the actual cost of a farrier visit and it's going to calculate the monthly cost for you based on an eight week shoeing cycle. If you are doing this with pen and paper or a traditional calculator, take the cost of your farrier visit, divide it by the number of weeks between each visit, so usually six to eight weeks, and then times that number by four to get your monthly cost. Note bene, some farriers charge 25 pounds for barefoot horses, but specialty barefoot trimmers are more expensive. Please check the cost of the farriers in your local area. Thank you. Then you have front shoes only, which is where the horse just has shoes on their front feet. This is quite a popular choice for most usual everyday riders so that comes in at around 45 pounds to 50 pounds per set i'm gonna say 50 because it's easier to divide in half so 50 pounds every eight weeks is 25 pounds a month you then have a full set so a full set is when your horse has shoes on the front of their feet and shoes on the back of their feet and this typically comes in at around 75 pounds every eight weeks and then you have a full set and studs so studs are kind of like the studs you find on football boots and they're typically used by a vendor or people who are going to be doing fast work on grass in the winter. So if you're doing a hunter trial or you're eventing in kind of September, October, studs help give you that little extra bit of grip. So they're typically used in competitions home, but I've thrown them in here because it's interesting. They typically come in at around £90 for a full set and studs. So choose the one that feels most relevant to you, write it down, and then let's move on. We then have insurance. Now insurance is incredibly variable, which is why I haven't put anything here. It depends on how much you're insuring the horse for, how much they cost, what activities you'll be doing, what breed the horse is, where the horse is kept. There are so many variables to, to insurance. So what I would like you to do, if you wanna figure out a really accurate sense of what your insurance might be, is to go on the insuranceemporium.com and what you're going to do there is it will ask you a bunch of questions of what you might do with your horse and you can make up your horse and then at the end it's going to give you a sense of how much it's going to cost to insure that horse per month and you can toggle things on and off. Some people choose not to insure their horses which is completely fine. Typically insurance is expensive and it's especially expensive if you're insuring for vet bills. The one thing I would say is that if you're not insuring really make sure that you're putting money away for vet bills because typically whilst insurance can be anywhere between I don't know 25 pounds a month up to about 100 pounds a month if you're not putting that money away if you get a vet bill even if you were to save 100 pounds a month for vet bills that is 1200 pounds a year and vet bills one vet bill can cost as much as that depending on what the injury is so I would just say if you're not going to insure make sure that you have the money to pay for a vet bill if it comes up because they can really really run into the thousands. So as I said, it comes in between 25 and 100 pounds. I'm gonna put 50 here because I wanna give you a number. And then we have vaccinations, dentist, saddler, physio, and worming. These are all typically things that you would do twice a year. Some things like saddler and physio, you would either do more or less of. It's kind of a personal preference. Horses who tend to be competing and doing more with their bodies or are growing and growing muscle tend to need the physio and the saddler more than horses who are just doing everyday work that's pretty 
pretty standard. So I've put these all in as a once a year and twice a year and let me throw the numbers in. So if you're in the Excel spreadsheet, all you need to do is put in the actual cost and it's gonna calculate the monthly cost for you. If you are using a traditional pen and paper, all that you need to do is get your actual cost, figure out how many times a year you need it. So say it's twice a year, times that number by two and then divide that number by 12 to get your monthly cost. Okay, activities and competitions. This is the bit we love to forget about, but it's it's such an important part of owning a horse if this is the kind of thing that you want to do. It can be really easy to be like, I won't do something every month or I'm just going to pay for the bare minimum. But the reality is that sometimes we really need something to aim for or we can get bored is easily. So we might want to do things like clear round jumping, things like this. Now, based on my own experience of being out there and competing, these are the costs that I found for you. I'm going to throw a few in here. I want you to really think about the kinds of things that you'll be doing per month take these numbers and add it to your budget. Don't cheat and say that you're not gonna do any of them because I know that you're lying. I want you to really think about how these numbers would fit into your budget. If you're using the Excel spreadsheet, all that you need to do is put in the number of times that you plan to do something and it's gonna give you the monthly cost. So for example, you might do two clear rounds, three dressage competitions, one one day event, etc. If you're doing this with pen and paper and a traditional calculator, all that you need to do is times the cost of each activity by the number of times that you plan to do it. There's also space in this spreadsheet to calculate your own monthly cost for an activity, but you're gonna to have to do the sums yourself. Last few bits now, transport. So transport may not be relevant to you if you already have a horse box or someone who's gonna drive you, but if not, it's one of those hidden costs that can really, really sting you, especially if you're having to hire. I've put a few um, options down here of day hires from my research, just to give you an idea of how much it costs, because it can be very expensive. The best thing to do with transport if you're able to is to buddy up with someone else and split the petrol. It can be very expensive to also do your trailer and horse box test. I mean, I looked it up because I thought it might be a good option for me and it's in the thousands. So, you know, it's not always an option just to be like, oh, I'll just drive myself because if you're gonna do your trailer test, it costs a couple of thousands and then you need to have a car that tows. If you're gonna do your horse box test, it's the same thing. But anyway, let me give you a couple of examples of costs of self-dryer, trailer hire and driven horse box hire. So again, if you're in the Excel spreadsheet, all you need to do is put in the number of times you plan to use any particular type of transport and it will give you a monthly cost based on an average price. If at any point you want to change what that average price is on any of these, there is notes in the Excel spreadsheet on how to do that. If you're using pen and paper in a traditional calculator, you just need to do the same sum as before. So the actual cost per day and how many times you plan to use it is gonna give you your monthly cost. Self-hire um, horse box is about, about 70 pounds um, a day. Sometimes it goes up on the weekend, depending on the company. Uh, trailer hire is around £50 a day. Again, on the weekend, that's probably a bit higher because the um, demand for them is higher. And driven horse box hire, this is where it gets expensive. It completely depends how far you're going. But I know a lot of horse box hires where the driver will have a cap of a minimum of £100 to spend. So... Think about that on top of a one day event, you've already spent 160 pounds in a day. Just something to think about. Finally, I've got four little things for you called miscellaneous. So we've got our rainy day fund, our repairs and replacements, our tack shop detours, and our travel to the yard. Let me talk you through what these are and you're gonna have to make a decision on how much you wanna put into the pot. So my rainy day fund is just that. As I said, vet bills, replacements, Things happen, they're horses. You might need a little bit of money aside to get some extra bales of hay, some extra food, something that you weren't planning on spending, essentially. I always try and make it around 50 pounds, but you could make it higher or lower, depending on your own budget. Repairs and replacements. As a new horse owner, I cannot tell you how much, when people say there's always something to pay for, like there is always something to pay for especially when you're owning a horse for the first time, you are buying everything from scratch. That doesn't mean you need to buy everything new. It doesn't mean you need to buy everything at like Chanel level of like quality, but you're gonna be buying stuff all the time. Which leads me on to my next point, tack shop detours. You think this shouldn't be in a budget, it should. I went into the tack shop the other day to pick up my boots, which had been repaired. They're like 10 year old Ariats. The zip was broken, they fixed them for me. They're amazing. I came out with my boots, fly spray, neat's foot and hoof oil and treats. <laughs> I spent like 50 pounds. I went in for boots, my own boots that I own. Tax shop detours. 
budget for it. It's gonna get you. Finally, travel to the yard. Depending on if you have a car or you're traveling by public transport to the yard, you need to be able to thinking about how much it costs you to get there, especially because we all know that yards are typically like in the countryside or somewhere where they're not near, near things that you are near. So you're thinking about the petrol. So for example, I probably spend about 40 pounds on my car's petrol and the majority a month and that majority of that is me going to the yard so it's worth putting in there because if you can't afford if you can afford everything else and they're not the petrol how do you get to the yard i'm not going to go into car insurance mot all of that because i do see that as slightly separate but the actual travel cost of getting to the yard something you need to think about so Repairs and replacements, I'm going to put 50. Tax shop details, I'm going to make it 25. It's up to you how much you think you can resist. And then travel to the yard for me is 40. So what you should have now is a bunch of personalised numbers based on your own experience of what you think it will be like to own a horse for yourself. And that number will probably be somewhere between, I want to say, £350 all the way up to nearly £1,000. And that I would say is pretty standard actually for owning a horse. It really, I mean, there's a huge difference in the difference in those two numbers and it will vary week by week, month by month, depending on what you're doing, where you're going, blah, 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 time of year. But it is not cheap to own a horse. And if you're watching this and realizing that it's way out of your budget, I also want you to know that there are so many other paths to being around horses that do not require ownership. Riding lessons, sharing, loaning, working at a riding school, working at a yard where you get to ride. And one of the things I was really passionate about when I set up Equestrian Money Diaries is that anyone can enter their cost, which means if you go on my website and you look up riding lessons costs in the UK, you will also find loads of riding lesson Equestrian Money Diaries. You'll also find loads of sharing ones and loaning ones. There are so many ways to be involved with horses. Owning them is not the only one. And I hope that this video hasn't made you feel disheartened, but I do think I feel really passionately about people understanding how much they cost because they are not cheap animals. No matter how many corners you try and cut, they deserve to live um, with high welfare standards and we deserve to give that to them. So I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me any questions or comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this money video, let me know because I also have a bunch of costs from Canada, the US, Europe, Ireland, uh, Wales in particular, and certain counties in the UK. So if you'd like more of this, but for specific areas, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to make them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll I'll see you next time. Bye.